Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. Thank you for joining. My name's Helen Noble, celebrant of Surrey, founder of Swan Song and co-founder of the Healthy Marriage Success Course. I come weekly to give you tips and insight and useful information to all things ceremonial and sometimes everything in between. This week I'm talking about why having a celebrant is useful, how it gives you lots of things. Let's dive in. So, when planning a wedding, it is worth considering separating the legals from the ceremony. Now, when you do that, in England, if you do the legals, you do the legals at the registry office any time. Could be the week before, could be the same day, could be the day before, could be whenever. Um, but it's just worth noting that you can get married before or after your wedding. We wouldn't recommend doing it after for several reasons, but I'll do another one on that. Um, I would recommend doing it before, but there is always the option to do both and have a shared ceremony with the celebrant and the registrar. Now that again can be another video. This video I'm talking about why it's useful to separate them completely. So separating them completely gives you flexibility and being able to be flexible and say yes to more of what you want is really important. Having the legals done gives you the flexibility to incorporate however you wish to things that are sentimental, things that might be religious, things that might be cultural. Now when I say religious, if you are having a humanist celebrant, which I'm not, I'm an independent celebrant, so I belong to the couple, I belong to you. A humanist celebrant um, has their own doctrine and believes in the humanist doctrine um, and brings that to the ceremony, which is fine, as a priest believes in God and brings that to the ceremony. Um, I just believe in whatever makes you happy and will create the ceremony that you want. So I belong to you, I belong to the couple. Um, I mean, I obviously have membership with independent professional bodies. I'm not just rogue. Um, and I belong to the UK, so the UK Alliance of Wedding Planners, so that there are standards that are met. So there is that quality control. I'm not saying I'm completely rogue. Um, but I don't belong to a, doc, a school of thought. So you having an independent celebrant gives you flexibility away from organised religion and doctrine and legalities. But by having an independent celebrant, you can incorporate religious beliefs. Think of it like school and education. You can get educated in so many different ways. You don't have to be in school. You're still learning. So you can make space for faith. You can have religious bits inside it, but it's not about being in a school of thought. I hope that's really clear. Makes sense in my head. Um, so you have that flexibility to incorporate that sense of ritual, whatever and however that looks like to you. It might be you want to have religious content. It might be you want your best mate to do a Bible reading. It could be anything. Or it could be you found a really cool reading and you want it performed with everyone in the room as a surprise and you know imagination is your only limit because i'm not going to limit you with doctrine and i'm not going to limit you with legalities so you have huge amounts of emotional space for the flexibility and choice that you want the second thing is because of that choice it means you have freedom so the lovely thing about having an independent celebrant is that you can have whatever you like. The scary thing about having an independent celebrant is you can have whatever you like. It's a big blank canvas. And where do you start? Obviously, you start with me having conversations and there is a process that I follow, which means we can get the best out of you. But it just means that you understand that there is a whole workforce of us 
celebrants who are skilled professionals that have invested in our business. Like I mentioned before, I'm part of um, bod professional bodies to keep me up to scratch, to keep me on points, to keep me modern, to keep me in tune with the legislation that's going on. It's not just party for one in my office with the peacock. Where is he? Mr. Peacock here. Um, so you have that skill set to tap into. And I've been doing it for 11 years and I love it. But every day is a school day, learning something, learning something. Um, no, I shouldn't say school because it's not about doctrine. Every day is an opportunity to learn and grow. And I know that sounds really like, uh, but I learn so much from my couples. I love it. I love it. I love it. So there is that unique journey that I can take you on because it's a blank canvas. But I understand that blank canvas can be scary, but I have the tools, the expertise, the knowledge. You know, I've got the CV. It works. It's fine. Trust me. <laughs> and the other thing that you can have that's a benefit to having an independent celebrant is that I write the script. It's not a set script. It's not written by a person. And every other officiant in the country, so every other registrar has the same script. They have a little bit of flexibility. They'll be like, you can choose vowels A, B or C. And you pick A, B or C. But basically, everyone up and down the land at two o'clock will basically be saying the same, the same vowels. Which in one way is quite nice because you're sort of united in the marriage as a country. Um, but actually, if you want the wedding about you and you want to make your promises and you want to say what kind of spouse you're going to be, then you don't want me telling you. I will guide you, I'll support you, I'll help you. But the energy that we can bring to the room because I have a script or I can go off script if you want. I don't tend to do that because nobody likes surprises at a wedding unless you're a couple that love surprises, in which case I'll have some up my sleeve. Um, but it means you get the energy and you get the, um, the guest engagement. So I'm not going to suddenly start with the whole audience participation because in Britain we'll all go, oh, no, thank you very much. But it does mean they get engaged and it does mean you're bringing them on the journey with you and it does mean they feel part of it. It makes the guests and the couple's relationship engaging. I'm not going to make them necessarily participate, although there are several ways of doing it, but it means that your guests have that engagement with the ceremony that's going on and we can do any sort of other things around it. But with that knowledge of who you're getting, because you've chosen them, because you've looked at their CV, you know, and all their credentials and gone, yeah, they, they, they sound sound, going with them. So you, you get that connection. You get the connection that you know what's coming. You've had a rehearsal, you've seen the script, you signed it off, you know what's coming. You've got the engagement between the guests and yourselves and yourself and the celebrants. So you've got that energy in the room going on and you've got the flexibility of having what you want because you're not restrained by doctrine or legalities. So it streamlines the process. You're like, this is what I need to do. I need to get married here, and then we're gonna have a rehearsal, and we're gonna do this. And it means you can streamline people's roles, because everyone will say, well, how can I help, can I help? Or the grooms will be like, what do I do, other than match everybody else and have a little buttonhole? I'll be like, I have got lots of jobs for you. Um, I did a Insta Live on all the jobs, if you want to go find that. Um, but I will probably do another video on that as well. Um, so it gives you that planning. It gives you that peace of mind. If you love a strategy and you love a spreadsheet, we can go down that road. So it, it gives you more of what you want, which is why having a celebrant-led wedding is amazing. And freeing yourself from the legals is definitely worth considering. I don't mean freeing yourself from legals forever, otherwise you've just had a very pretty party and you have declared your love for each other and it is a real wedding, but you're not married. So after your wedding day, that relationship won't change. So I always recommend that you get married as close to your wedding as you can so that the first thing you really do together as a married couple is have a wedding. What's not to love about that? So hope that's helpful, gives you flexibility, it becomes stress-free, you get your audience engaged, and it gives you freedom to have more of what you want. Enjoy, find me on my website, find more videos on here, find me on the grid, on the ground, whatever you wanna call it, and I will speak to you next week.
Take care. Bye-bye.